I have read hundreds of books over my 17 plus year career, over my last decade in management, and now as a career coach, many people have asked me for book recommendations to help them advance in their career. In this video, I'll share 10 of my book recommendations that others have found most useful to help you unlock the next level of success in your career. In one minute or less per book, I'll share what the book is about, how it can help you in your career, and my one big takeaway from the book. These books are in no particular order. Let's jump in. At work, we usually have to negotiate something or another. For example, negotiating your salary when you get a job offer, or negotiating a raise. Negotiation is usually seen as two parties going at each other with each party trying to get their way. But in this book, Getting to Yes, the author teaches us how we can create win-win situations where we truly understand and empathize with the other person's interests as well as our own and try to fight the problem and not the people. This is the book to help you in negotiations. My biggest takeaway here was the concept of a but now, best alternative to a negotiated agreement so you know when to walk away when the negotiation is not being fruitful. Negotiation is just one challenge that we face at work. A big part of our daily lives is influencing, influencing our peers, influencing our manager, and this is where this next book comes in. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is actually one of my favorite books and I have a separate video on it that I'll link below. This book is a timeless classic that can help you understand how to influence others and build strong relationships in the process. It's filled with wisdom on how to build interpersonal skills. My biggest takeaway from this book is really try to think from the other person's perspective. Put yourself in their shoes, try to understand what they want and then help them achieve it. But some people can use influence to manipulate you. This is where the next book comes in, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. In this book, as the title suggests, the author goes into the science behind influence so you truly understand how and why some of these techniques work. And knowing that, now you can guard yourself against it. One example is a company may say that you have only one week to decide whether you want to accept this offer or not. Now you don't know whether that's a true constraint or whether they're just trying to rush you into a decision to fill that spot as soon as possible. When this has happened to me in the past, I've asked the company, can I have a couple more weeks to decide? Usually the company has come back and said yes. The next book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The title says it all. This book will help you be more effective and efficient at work, basically help you have a giant impact without burning out in the process. This book is the OG book on productivity. My biggest takeaway from this book is the Eisenhower Matrix, which talks about importance and urgency. At work, we're constantly distracted by urgent requests, emails, messages that come our way and are constantly interrupting us. But what we can do is take a step back and look at what is truly important, which may or may not be urgent. That helps us focus our effort on work that is truly impactful. If you're liking this video so far, smash that like button. It'll help support the channel. We talked about a lot of distractions. The distractions can create a lot of noise when we are trying to communicate. How can you communicate effectively, get your point across, and be heard? That's where this next book comes in. It's called Get to the Point. It's especially valuable when talking to your boss because we know they have limited time and you want to make sure your points are gotten across. This book is full of gems if you want to improve your communication and be more confident. One takeaway I had here was that I used to end my sentence without a period when talking. So for example, I would say, this project went well, that well, would mean I was questioning myself. So the idea was that I had to end on a power period. This project went well. This is what we achieved, X, Y, and Z. That is much more confident, isn't it? We can't speak of communication without the idea of conflict. At work, we may have conflict with our manager or with our peers. That's where this next book comes in. It's called Crucial Conversations. This book will teach you how to navigate this crucial conversation with technique, skill and confidence. This book teaches you how to prepare for the conversation, how to create a safe space for you and the other person to speak up, and how to manage your emotions in the moment. My takeaway here was that it takes time to prepare for these conversations and preparation can lead to conflict resolution. So take the time to prepare. We talked about managing our emotions in the middle of a crucial conversation. That takes self-awareness. Another important aspect there is reading others in that conversation for self-awareness, for reading others, and relationship building, that's where this next book comes in. It's called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. Improving our emotional intelligence will help us understand others and ourselves better. Growing up, so much of our education is based on developing our IQ. But stepping into the professional world, I realized how important emotional intelligence is to professional success. Technical and craft-specific skills are important but it's also important how we interact and work with others. The authors provide evidence on why emotional intelligence is important and how you can develop it further. 
My big takeaway here was that emotional intelligence is a skill, like any other. Usually there's a preconceived notion that you either have it or you don't, but it can be developed. And I'm living proof of it. Growing up, I was shy and socially awkward, but over time I've developed my emotional intelligence to ending up being in leadership positions and leading teams of 55 plus people. So if I can do it, you can do it too. When I was stepping into various leadership positions, one thing I had to be really open to is feedback. And this is where the next book comes in. It's called Thanks for the Feedback. It goes into the value of feedback, how to have open conversations to provide and receive feedback and how important feedback is to our growth, especially because all of us have blind spots. This book also talks about how we can welcome feedback and embrace it. My big takeaway here was to separate the character and the behavior. So for example, when you're giving feedback, focus on the behavior. The behavior can be changed and then the results will change. Same thing when receiving feedback, don't take it personally. It's not about your character, but actually it's about the behavior that you did that can be changed. As I grew to leadership positions, I realized that there is a political game being played and that there are different people with different degrees of power. And that's where this next book comes in. It's called 48 Laws of Power and it tells you the various techniques that people use either to get or maintain power. My big takeaway here is that there are a lot of manipulation techniques. Of course, that's obvious, right? But my hope is that you and I don't use it for evil, but instead can use that knowledge to guard against them and make a better corporate world. Heavy stuff aside, this last book is how to deal with a distracted world. We talked about emails and messages that come our way. At work, we constantly get requests from peers and our manager on everything that they'd like us to do. I mentioned the Eisenhower matrix earlier, moving from the urgent to more and more towards what's important. But this book takes it a step further. What is the most essential thing that you can do? What is gonna create the most impact and focusing most of our energy on it and being ruthless by cutting away things that are not essential. By doing less, we're actually gonna be doing more. My big takeaway here was the concept of being an editor. Instead of saying yes to more projects and more possessions, what can I take away? So the things that will remain are the ones that truly matter. Your backlog is probably already full of books that you wanted to read already, and now I've probably added a few more to your plate. This is not sponsored, but I've been using an app called Blinkist to quickly read summaries and figure out whether I wanna read that book further or not. If you wanna check out my review of Blinkist, you can click here. And they have a sale going on right now, which I'll link in the description below. I wish you the very best.